One of ancient times' most outstanding civilizations, the Parthian Empire arose on the historical scene as an influential force that challenged Rome's dominance in the East. Renowned for their prowess in warfare, groundbreaking military tactics, and cultural diversity, the Parthians helped shape history and the interaction between the ancient East and West. The Parthian Empire's roots can be traced back to the nomadic peoples of the Central Asian steppes. The specific tribe most often associated with the founding of the Parthian Empire is the Parni, one of the several steppe tribes that migrated to the region which today corresponds to northeastern Iran. In the late 3rd century BC, Arsaces I, leader of the Parni, led a rebellion against the Seleucid Empire. The Seleucids had emerged after Alexander the Great's death and had vast territories stretching from eastern Anatolia to the eastern regions of what is now Iran. Arsaces I achieved great success and managed to establish an independent power foothold around the year 247 BC, heralding the beginning of the Arsacid dynasty and the Parthian Empire. The name Parthian comes from the Parthava region, the equivalent of present-day Khorasan in Iran. While the Parni were just one of several tribes that settled in the region, they eventually became the dominant force and gave the emerging empire its name. After having established themselves as an independent stronghold, the Parthians went on to solidify and expand their territory, first by subduing neighboring tribes, and then by moving into territories formerly under Seleucid control, such as Mesopotamia. While the foundation of the Parthian Empire rested on nomadic tribes, Parthian culture quickly absorbed influences from the kingdoms it conquered. This included important elements of the Seleucid Hellenistic culture, but they also retained and promoted Iranian traditions, serving as a bridge between Persian heritage and external influences. The Parthian Empire expanded in several stages, and during its heyday, the Parthians controlled vast territories stretching from Central Asia to the Euphrates River, covering much of present-day Iran, Iraq, Armenia, and parts of Turkey, Syria, Pakistan, and Turkmenistan. The Parthians started to expand their territory westwards in the 2nd century BC, capturing Mesopotamia from the Seleucids. Mithrades I, king of the Parthian Empire from 171 to 138 BC, was especially influential in this expansion. He not only strengthened the Parthian holdings in Mesopotamia, but also expanded the empire as far south as Persia and as far east as present-day Afghanistan. Under Mithrades II's rulership, from 124 to 88 BC, the Parthians further expanded their territory, establishing dominion over parts of Syria and Armenia. This put them directly in conflict with Rome, starting a series of clashes and rivalries that would last for centuries. Besides their expansion to the west and south, the Parthians also looked to the east. During several periods of their history, they extended their reach as far as the Indus Valley, although their control over these regions was often ephemeral. The Parthian Empire was remarkable for its cultural complexity, both due to its geographical location and the sheer vastness of its territories. Alexander the Great's conquest resulted in a Hellenistic legacy in the Middle East, and the Parthians, despite being an Iranian dynasty, assimilated many elements of Greek culture. This is reflected in art, architecture, and even Parthian currency. Parthian art combined Greek, Persian, and other regional influences. The statues and boss reliefs featured Hellenistic influences, whilst the patterns and themes were distinctively Iranian. While the official language was Parthian, Greek was also widely used, especially in formal contexts and inscriptions. The Parthian Empire did not produce a major literary collection, but we do know that there was an educational system, and Zoroastrian writings were orally recited and passed on. Parthian society was hierarchical. The nobility and the royal family were at the top. The cavalry, especially the knightly class, had a crucial role to play in the empire's military and social structures. It was the core of Parthian military might and one of the reasons why the Parthian Empire managed to challenge other great powers, such as Rome, for centuries. Parthian horse archers were renowned for their false retreat strategy, in which they pretended to flee in disarray, prompting the enemy to pursue them. When the enemy had dispersed and were in pursuit, the archers would turn on their horses and fire arrows at their pursuers. This maneuver was so efficient that it was adopted by several other peoples in the steppes and in Central Asia. The cataphrats were the Parthian's army's heavy cavalry, fulfilling a role similar to that of Europe's medieval knights. They were heavily armored, as were their horses. The armor was made up of metal plates, or iron scales, almost covering the entire body. 
armed with long spears, swords, and sometimes maces or axes, they were a powerful threat on the battlefield. The Parthian Empire included many cities, the most important of which was Tessaphon, near modern Baghdad, and often the capital. These were hubs of commerce, culture, and administration. The Parthian Empire also profited from trade along the Silk Road, serving as an intermediary between East and West. The Parthian Empire's main religion was Zoroastrianism. While the Parthian kings were not ardent advocates of the faith, like the latter Sassanids, they nevertheless respected and followed many Zoroastrian traditions. As a result of its diversity and tolerance, the Parthian Empire was home to several other religions, including Judaism, early Christianity, Hellenistic cults, and even forms of Buddhism on its eastern borders. The relationship between the Parthian Empire and Rome was one of the world's most remarkable geopolitical events. These two major powers were frequently engaged in direct or indirect clashes, competing for control of regions such as Armenia and Mesopotamia. The Battle of Carhae in 53 BC is probably the most famous battle between the Parthians and the Romans. Marcus Licinius Crassus, one of Rome's triumvirs, was trying to expand Roman territory to the east. His army, however, was ambushed and defeated near Carhae in present-day Turkey by the Parthian army commanded by General Serena. The Parthian archer cavalry and cataphrats had a crucial role to play in this victory. Crassus was killed, and the debacle of Carhae became an open wound in Roman military memory. Notwithstanding the constant disputes, the two empires also enjoyed periods of diplomacy. For instance, following the Battle of Carhae, a treaty was negotiated allowing for the safe withdrawal of the remaining Roman army. During the Roman Emperor Augustus's reign, an agreement was struck with the Parthian king Phraates IV for the return of captured Roman military banners and war prisoners. One of the members of the Second Triumvirate and lover of Egyptian Queen Cleopatra, Mark Antony's campaigns against the Parthians in 36 BC attempted to ambitiously avenge the Roman defeat at the Battle of Carhae and expand Roman control further east. These campaigns were notable for their blunders and the political consequences for Mark Antony. He gathered a large army, with some sources claiming it could have been as big as 100,000 men, including legions, cavalry, and auxiliary troops. He also counted on Cleopatra's support, which provided resources for the whole expedition. The campaign got off to a promising start. Mark Antony scored some initial victories and besieged the city of Fraspa. Yet the Parthians resorted to guerrilla tactics, avoiding a direct confrontation and causing supply problems for the Romans. Ultimately, Mark Antony's supply lines were overstretched and he was forced to retreat. During the withdrawal, his army faced constant Parthian attacks, which resembled the tactics the Parthian used at Carhae. Mark Antony's army suffered heavy casualties throughout the retreat, with some sources saying that it lost up to 20,000 infantrymen and 4,000 horsemen. The campaign proved to be a disaster for Mark Antony. He not only failed in his mission to defeat the Parthians and recapture the Roman banners, but he also took several casualties. This loss weakened his position in Rome and harmed his reputation as a military leader. Octavian, his political rival, who would later become Emperor Augustus, used this misstep, along with Mark Antony's relationship with Cleopatra, to discredit him in Rome. Tensions between Mark Antony and Octavian would eventually lead to the Battle of Actium in 31 BC, where Mark Antony was soundly defeated. The Roman Emperor, Trajan, embarked on one of the most successful campaigns against the Parthians. He conquered Armenia, turning it into a Roman province, and moved south, seizing the Parthian capital, Ctesiphon, in 116 AD. Trajan reached the Persian Gulf, but these achievements quickly proved unsuitable. Hadrian, his successor, adopted a fallback policy and handed some territories back to the Parthians in an effort to cement a truce. Retaliating against a Parthian invasion of Armenia and Syria, the co-emperor, Lucius Verus, launched a series of campaigns against the Parthian Empire. The Romans succeeded in recapturing Armenia and again sacked Ctesiphon in 165 AD. Between 197 and 199 AD, the Roman Emperor Septimius Severus launched a campaign against the Parthians, once again capturing Ctesiphon and plundering the city. The Parthian Empire came to an end as a result of internal conflicts, economic downturn, and external pressure. The empire was splintered by internal strife and the growing autonomy of vassals and local governors. The final blow to the Parthian Empire came from the Sassanid Empire. 
led by Ardashir I, a local ruler from the Persis province, the Sassanids defied and finally defeated the Parthian government. In 224 AD, Ardashir I defeated Artabanus IV, the last Parthian king, during the decisive battle of Hermazgan and established the Sassanid dynasty, bringing an end to the Parthian Empire and the dawn of a new era for the Persian world.